United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres stressed that conflict in Yemen must end now. After six years of devastating war, the root causes of the Yemeni crisis are explored. Healthy violations continue, and this time they play with the fire of education. Welcome to Yemen Today TV. This is the English News with me, Roshan Fouet. The National Resistance announced capture of a spy cell belonging to the Iranian-backed militia in Mauza'a area in Taiz. Joint Forces Media stated that the General Intelligence Division of the National Resistance dismantled a spy cell affiliated with the militia after an operation that resulted in arrest of three members of the cell, namely Shams al-Din Mohammed, Mohammed Darwish and Az al-Din Ali. The spy cell was tasked with monitoring movements of the joint forces in Mauza'a in the west coast and held smuggling weapons and equipment to the militia. This is considered an achievement for the General Intelligence Division of the National Resistance and a severe blow to the Iranian-backed militia. In Hodaida, healthy militia shelled residential villages in El Tuhaita district, south of the city. A local sources said that the Houthi militia brutally targeted residential villages and houses, causing fear and panic among civilians. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres stressed the need for the Houthi armed group to realize the importance of ending hostilities. Guterres said in a statement to Al Arabiya TV that there will be a continuity li line for their work in Yemen and the Houthis must realize the importance of stopping hostilities. It is important for the Yemeni government to understand the importance of keeping ports and airports open. But we are in a situation where each side is waiting to see what the other will do, he added. This recent healthy escalation comes at a time when the United Nations is trying its best to establish a ceasefire in order, resume negotiations and resolve the conflict that has been going on for years. The ongoing war in Yemen has entered its sixth year, seemingly with no hope seen that this will be resolved, at least on the shorter term. The following report attempts to explore the root causes of the crisis since the year 2011 till now. The conflict in Yemen shows no real signs of abating as it enters its sixth year and civilians from across the country and generations continue to bear the brunt of military hostilities and unlawful practices of state and non-state armed groups alike. Gross human rights violations, including what could amount to war crimes, are being committed throughout the country. By the end of 2021, it is estimated that over 200,033 Yemenis would have been killed as a result of fighting and the humanitarian crisis. Meanwhile, the Office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights has documented more than 20,000 civilians killed and injured by the fighting since March 2015. A man-made humanitarian crisis has spread with approximately 16 million people waking up hungry every day. In 2011, what is called then the Arab Spring had its echoes in Yemen and a popular uprising erupted internally. In response, President Ali Abdullah Saleh facilitated a smooth and peaceful power transfer after 33 years of rule. Saleh handed over power peacefully to his deputy, Abd Rabbu Mansour Hadi through general election, setting the stage for National Dialogue Conference. After two years of consultations, the National Dialogue Conference presented a blueprint for a new federal map that partitioned Yemen into regions without considering a socio-economic or regional grievances. The map received minimal popular support and was staunchly opposed by different factions, including the Houthi rebels. The Houthi rebels then capitalized on popular discontent and consolidated their control over the governorate of Saada and neighboring areas in the northern parts of Yemen. In September 2014, the Houthi rebels managed to extend their territorial control 
taking over a number of army and security positions in the capital Sana'a. Following the Houthis' takeover of Sana'a in early 2015, President Hadi and the members of his government were forced to flee. By 25th of March 2015, the coalition of state led by Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates intervened at the request of President Hadi with the aim of restoring the internationally recognized government to power. This marked the beginning of a full-blown armed conflict as the coalition launched an aerial bombing campaign against Houthi rebel militia forces. Over the following six years, the conflict spread to engulf the entire country and saw a proliferation in the parties to end the conflict. The coalition supported, trained and funded armed units within the government forces such as the security built, the giants and the elite forces to fight the Houthi rebels. In December 2017, the Houthi rebels further consolidated their control after assassinating former President Ali Abdullah Saleh and currently remain in control of most population centres, including Sana'a. The UN back talks in Sweden that concluded in late 2018 resulted in patchy and fragile ceasefires in Hodeida. Ultimately, the scene in Yemen gets grimmer and grimmer with this ongoing war not willing to abate. This makes it tough even for the most professional political observer to predict. The Houthi militia forced public and private schools in Sana'a to hold sectarian events during the morning assembly. Educational sources said the Houthi militia forced schools to hold sectarian activities. The militia has changed the school curriculum, names of schools and colleges and replaced them with sectarian names. The rebels have dismissed about 8,000 teachers and workers in the educational sector. Local sources said that the militia dismissed 5,000 teachers in Sana'a and another 3,000 in other cities as part of their plan to tighten control over education. The militia started measures related to dismiss and retire around 160,000 state employees in the institutions under the militia's control and replaced them with loyalists. Since they seized the capital Sana'a, healthy rebels have been depleting all aspects of life. Their aggression has reached climax when they started injecting the school curriculum with their poisonous sectarian ideology. This report has more on this story. The school book presses in Sana'a received new copies of textbooks that differ from the previous curricula. After the Houthi militia added some modifications and poisoned them with racist ideas to be printed instead of the basic educational curricula. Teachers in the area controlled by the Iran-backed militia have warned the students' families of these poisonous curricula that are waiting for their children in schools with the beginning of the new school year. Educational sources confirmed that the Houthi militia stopped the curricula of the basic educational stage with ideas and beliefs imported from Tehran which threatened to blow the minds of young students. Yemeni law rejected these abuses and imposes punishment for exploiting or violating a public function. But the Houthi militia has become the one who allows for these abuses to blow the minds of Yemeni students. The Houthi militia had made disastrous alterations to the school curricula, especially for primary school students in an effort to form an extremist generation that owes absolute loyalty to them. On the 19th of August, the UNICEF Children Organization warned the Houthi militia against subjecting education to political or sectarian use and assured that they will not have any connection with the printing of the new sectarian curriculum. In El Dala, one person was killed and others were injured in an explosion in El Seha Mosque in El Jalila. Local sources said that the explosion targeted a gathering of sheikhs after prayers. An explosive device targeted the cars when the people were leaving the mosque, killing one of them and wounding about four others, some of whom are in critical condition. Coming next. Amid hard economic conditions and national currency drop, money transfer fees is another burden on Yemenis.
ارسال ستي على منطقه الروضه استهدف الاطفال الابرياء اللي يلعبوا في الشارع يدعي للسلام يقول له السلام انت الاطفال يقاتل يقول اطفالنا الابرياء انا قلت استجعت ولا اقول معي واحد صاروخ ثاني طلعت البيت حقنا عشان العب مع اصحابي والصاروخ طرح Welcome back. The constant suffering of the Yemeni citizen extends further due to the high exchange rate that reached uprising levels. This led to the rise in transfer fees that exhausted the citizen and increased their suffering. Difficult economic and poor conditions are factors that worsen the hardship for Yemenis. The national currency war that the Houthi militia is carrying out has ravaged the lives of millions of Yemenis. It is a hidden war that is more dangerous than the ongoing military war in the country. Price differences have negatively affected a large segment of workers and employees who can no longer help their families in Houthi-controlled areas due to the rise in transfer fees to choking levels after it reached approximately 68%. Today I went to transfer money and as you can see in this invoice, the transfer fees is approximately 70% of the transfer amount. Meaning, if you want to transfer money to your relatives in Sana'a, you have to pay extra 70% of the transferred amount because it is unreasonable to transfer to them only 30% where it doesn't cover anything. On one occasion, I sent money with a driver. However, the checkpoint in Radar, Governor Ed, confiscated the money from the driver. The new printed banknotes has not solved any problem so far, as the problem is still present. Thus, we ask those responsible to look at the citizen with an eye of mercy and find a solution to this problem. A heavy burden is placed on the shoulders of the citizen, under duress towards a living hell. The record rise in transfer fees has exhausted the daily waged workers and become a barrier to dreams of many young people who are doing their best to achieve them, such as Najib Al Ahmadi. I have been working for a while to collect marriage expenses, but the transfer fees affected me. I tried to transfer an amount and discovered that more than half of the amount was taken in exchange for transfer fees. Every time we make a transfer, transfer fees rise, as our daily wage goes to remittance fees. Thus, we can't save anything. A widening gap between the government's decisions to control price distortions and the reality, according to economic observers, does not rise to the extent of the economic and living disaster that afflicts the country. An excessive cost paid by the simple citizen, regardless of the continued currency drop, the deliberate targeting of the citizen by the Houthi militia and the distortion of the national currency, not to mention the poor government solutions that was described by observers as a patching technique. Healthy rebels are accused of brainwashing children and sending them to different frontiers. Field reports and media confessions made by the healthy militia confirm the high number of children killed in suicide attacks. In the absence of any actions taken by the international community and child protection organizations. The following report has more on that. War in Yemen has hit hardest those who are the least responsible, children. This is what Save the Children organization said about the war in Yemen. Right now, 93% of children in Yemen are suffering and need assistance due to the violence that continues to devastate the country. Millions of children in Yemen are at risk of death, injury, starvation, and deaths. The war in the country has caused widespread hunger and poverty, leaving millions of children in dire need for food, and they are suffering from malnutrition. Indeed, more than 60 million of Yemenis will face high levels of acute food shortage, with an estimated 21,000 children are at risk of falling into famine. Because of weak health system, thousands of children and families are without medical attention, which is urgently needed for them to survive. Education is a problem too. Two million children in Yemen are out of school. Those vulnerable boys and girls are at risk of being exploited or abused.
The National Committee Against Coronavirus announced the registration of 40 new cases of the epidemic in five governorates. Committee officials said on Twitter that 22 cases were recorded in Hadramaut, 14 in Aden, 2 in Al Bayda, 1 in Al Dala, and 1 in Al Mahra. Also, three deaths were documented, two in Hadramaut and one in Al Dala, plus 25 recovered cases, 23 in Aden, and 2 in Al Bayda. With the current updates, the total confirmed cases are 7,751, including 1,450 deaths and 4,785 cases of recovery. Here is a reminder of the main headlines. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres stressed that conflict in Yemen must end now. After six years of devastating war, the root causes of the Yemeni crisis are explored. Healthy violations continue and this time they play with the fire education. This is the end of the news. It was Roshan Fouet. See you soon.